Hello and welcome to our An Ocean webinar. Um, so this is already uh, the third part of our webinar series. And um, today we are going to talk about our all new STM 550. Um, before we start, uh, let's just uh, have me switch on my webcam. So just to give you a short introduction to myself. So my name is Markus Florian. Here, I'm running the sales team in Ocean. I'm based um, at the headquarter of Ocean near Munich. And um, just switch up again my camera so for better bandwidth so that you have a better audio experience. And um, we will then be talking you through uh, the details and the usage of our new STM550. Uh, on the next slide, uh, just an overview about the topics we are going to discuss today. So first, a brief introduction to an ocean, to our company, for those who don't know us. But then we immediately will be diving uh, through uh, the details, um, the, the goals, uh, the solution, and uh, what is this being used for. We will also, of course, touch base on the key features, make some uh, examples of use cases. And at the end, uh, of course, you will have the opportunity to raise uh, some questions in our question and answer session. And we, of course, are going to answer them live during this webinar again at uh, the end of this webinar. Um, maybe a few words uh, to an ocean the company um, so we are uh, as an ocean the provider of an, and supplier of self-powered IOT solution in this context we clearly focus our activities around energy harvesting components modules and products and uh, those products are all geared about and around standardized wireless protocols of course uh, principally, uh, the, in the sub gigahertz range, it, it's geared around the Notion protocol, which is an open standard since 10 years and offers uh, three uh, frequencies in the sub gigahertz range, which is 868 for Europe, for example, 902 for the North American market and 928, for example, for Japan. Um, in this context, uh, of course, we are active since many years uh, and since 2000 year in total, we have shipped a double digit million quantity of products into various applications of building automation. So today we are counting over 1 million buildings. Uh, those are buildings uh, which range from small private homes up to big office buildings or hospitals. And in these applications, um, the, our technologies being used by multiple of our OM partners, of course. We as a company are active worldwide. So we, are, as mentioned, have the head office in Germany, but of course we have the team throughout Europe. We do have a, a presence, of course, in, in North America, but also in Far East, in Asia. Um, all our activities are around a strong and global patent portfolio. And there is over 100 patents in over 50 patent families. So this is, of course, the core of our technology and the products we are offering to the market. So that's just a short introduction. I will be handing over to my colleague, Matthias Kastner, who will guide you through the details of our STM 550. So over to you, Matthias. Thank you very much, Markus. Uh, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Matthias Kassner. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing at Anocean, and I will guide you to the, through the features of our STM 550 multi-sensor. So before we are discussing uh, the features of this multi-sensor, let's have a look at what are actually our goals. What type of uh, problems uh, would we like to solve uh, with our multi-sensor? So we aim for functional, flexible, and intelligent buildings. What does this mean? Functional buildings mean they provide all the base functionality that you have come to expect. Uh, you can control the light levels, you can control the temperature, the humidity, you can control the shutters, all of this using a wireless data to give you maximum flexibility. Additionally, we want to make buildings not only functional, but also intelligent and flexible. Intelligent buildings are able to gather information about the current status, what type of areas are occupied, how much is my building utilized, do I need to clean certain areas of my building, what are my staffing levels. Flexible buildings allow you to address new use cases. A lot of modern office buildings are built as shared offices. This means they frequently change occupancy and usage. So the ability to adapt to 
these different changing scenarios is key in enabling intelligent buildings. On the picture below, you can see one of the buildings that is enabled by an ocean technology. This building is the Squire, located right outside of Frankfurt Airport. It is Germany's largest office building, and it uses more than 18,000 self-powered and ocean sensors to provide user input, monitor environmental conditions, detect motion, measure the status of doors and windows, and use this information to control the light level, adjust the humidity, set the right temperature, and provide a good air quality. Taking the data generated uh, by the sensors in such building enables intelligent decisions based on the real-time sensor data. These decisions allow you to optimize oper operation and monitor utilization of your building. They show you the status of different workplaces. They allow you to analyze uh, detailed parameters such as the current temperature, the humidity, the window status, the occupancy. And based on that, uh, they derive additional information, like what is the availability of a free work desk? What is the availability of the next meeting room? And they give you insight into trends. They can tell you how are different areas in your office used? Which areas are used the most? Are there areas which are underutilized uh, and should be used differently? In order to gather such wireless uh, information, you need sensors. And these sensors should be easy to install. This is very important. The ease of installation and retrofit matters because less than 2% of buildings are built new every year. If you look around you, no matter where you are, uh, in Germany, in France, uh, in UK, in Nordics, uh, in Southern Europe, over there in the States, the majority of buildings today has been built. Very little buildings are built new from ground. So to make buildings smarter is primarily a question of making existing buildings smarter. Many of them will be a, a little bit more modern than the one in the middle, which is the Taimadera Temple uh, in Japan, in Nara, that was constructed uh, in 710 AD. But even this temple, much like uh, other office buildings, wanted uh, to do an upgrade to modern controls, in this case, an upgrade to a more modern lighting solution. And much as uh, with other solutions, you want to make this upgrade as easy as possible. And this means you would like to avoid uh, having to draw lots of wiring, having to put holes into the walls to adjust your sensors. You would like to make the setup as easy as possible. This one key factor enabled by wireless solutions. Another factor, of course, is the absence of wiring maximizes your flexibility. Many of the office buildings today are built as shared offices. The majority of new office construction in Berlin, for instance, is shared offices today. More than half of all buildings uh, in the city of London are shared offices. Shared offices mean you can quickly adapt the needs of your office to its tenants. Some might rent a space for one month, others might uh, rent a longer term solution, maybe half a year, maybe three years. Some might want to increase the area, some want to decrease them. Your building needs to be able to adjust for different utilization. And truly wireless solutions eliminate the need for wiring and thereby allow you to quickly place uh, sensors and controls at different locations. But at the moment where you remove the wiring to get a truly wireless solution, of course, you must have an integrated power source to make your sensor, your actuator operational. And this is one of the key aspects. If you have a wireless solution, then this can provide you flexibility, but you need to look for a solution that also gives you low maintenance because maintenance will impact directly your operational cost. It will affect uh, the building functionality, especially when it's not working, and thereby the user satisfaction. Having energy harvesting devices enables maintenance-free operation. This is one of the key technologies that we and Ocean believe in. 
the combination of energy harvesting, wireless sensor functionality to provide data for smart buildings. Another aspect that is very important is versatility. You would like to have uh, one device, but possibly enable many different applications depending on how, office, how your office is utilized. Having multi-sensor allows you to gather different sensor data all from the same device. So you can use it as a temperature and humidity sensor to control your HVAC system. You can use it as a window sensor to detect if a door or window is open or closed. Or you can even use it as an acceleration sensor to measure the utilization of certain assets. We will discuss a little bit more in detail in the subsequent chapters how these different functions are implemented. So these are the requirements that we wanted to meet. We wanted a wireless multi-sensor solution that is self-supplied and enables a rich variety of applications in the building. Our latest solution that addresses these requirements is the STM550 multi-sensor. I would like to introduce this a little bit more in detail. STM550 is what we call a Swiss knife because it integrates a lot of different functions that you might require at some point uh, in your building. It is a fully integrated solution measuring temperature, humidity, illumination, acceleration, and in magnet contact status. It is integrated in a small and compact housing and self-supplied by means of an integrated solar cell. Let's have a look a little bit more in detail on these features. STM550 is a solar powered multi-sensor. So it generates the energy required from its for its operation from the ambient light. It integrates a small solar cell and this uses harvests the available ambient light to provide all the energy required for its operation. Because of this, uh, STM550 operates self-powered and is therefore maintenance free. STM550 integrates dedicated sensors to measure temperature, humidity, illumination, acceleration, and the magnet contact status. STM550 provides lots of different functions and therefore easy configuration is key. STM550 can therefore be configured via an NFC interface, which allows you to use your smartphone or an NFC reader connected uh, to a PC for easy commissioning and quick adaption. Finally, STM550 uses the original PTM module form factor that is integrated by a lot of our customers in existing designs. It uh, comes in a very compact housing measuring just 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters with 13 millimeter of height. Now let's have a look at the typical use cases for the different sensors in STM550. First of all, to power these sensors, the energy comes from energy harvesting. Energy harvesting means we use available energy from the environment, clean energy, because we reuse energy that is existing already. What type of energy can we use? At an ocean, we focus at three major sources of energy. The first one is kinetic energy. Most people will notice from our self-supplied kinetic switches. The press of a switch generates the energy required to transmit a wireless information about its status. Sensors such as STM550 often use available light, solar energy, for which they use solar cells to convert the energy into uh, its internal energy store. Finally, certain uh, applications use thermal energy. Temperature gradients, for instance, be between radiators uh, and the room environment and form uh, energy which is sufficient uh, to power devices uh, such as thermostats, uh, which you can see on the right. These clean energy from the environment makes our devices self-supplied and allows the sensors to operate. In STM550, one of the most commonly used uh, sensor types is temperature and humidity. Temperature and humidity are some of the most basic things that touch our lives. We feel immediately if a room is warm or cold, uh, 
we feel if the air is dry or humid. So the data from a temperature and humidity sensor monitors and controls the HVAC systems to provide the comfortable environment. So many users actually directly experience uh, issues with temperature and humidity. So monitoring the correct operation, especially if you retrofit a sensor, is key. Many service calls uh, that you will see, for instance, uh, in conference areas are related to temperature and humidity. And here's a question for you. What would you guess uh, how many percent of such service calls actually belong to temperature and humidity? Now, depending on how much time you spend at different conference centers, uh, different hotels, this is something you might have experienced yourself. So what is your guess? Is this something that happens seldom, less than 10%? Does this happen every once in a while, maybe 20%? A bit more often, 30%? Or does it happen very often, over 50%? You, you might have uh, experienced uh, this yourself. What are your typical complaints that you have? Is it that the coffee is missing, the Wi-Fi is not working, or is it that the room is too cold, too hot, too chilly, too many uh, ventilation? So this is a very common problem that can be solved uh, by constantly monitoring temperature and humidity data. So I would be really interested uh, to hear your thoughts about this. So you see the, the four different options, uh, go ahead, ask yourself, what is it uh, that I'm mostly annoyed? I'm sitting in a conference center. What is the biggest problem uh, that I typically face? How often uh, do I face such problems? Now look at the results are in. Over 50%, the vast majority, actually over 50%, uh, indeed uh, believes that over 50% uh, of the service calls are related to temperature and humidity. And that is true. There, there are many studies uh, in conference areas about the biggest area of dissatisfaction. And this is not the lack of coffee or problems with the Wi-Fi. The number one source of complaints that lead to a service technician or service call are related to temperature and humidity. And this is something that can be very easily addressed. Monitoring your room climate allows you to avoid these problems. Another use case enabled by STM550 is the measurement of illumination. Illumination means the amount of light from the sun coming in through the window. That's one of the most common cases to measure in available ambient light. This allows you to control your light level so that when it's very bright day out there, the light is shining in, you can automatically lower your internal light lab levels, which is called daylighting. But it also allows you to control your shutters uh, to avoid blinding, glare, or even the heat up resulting from direct sun exposure. A very interesting piece of sensor data is acceleration. Many times when we introduce the STM550 multi-sensor, people understand perfectly well what a magnet contact is, what illumination is, what temperature humidity sensor is. But what is it about acceleration? Acceleration basically tells you is something shaking, vibrating, or moving. And you can use this information to answer two questions. Often, if something is shaking or moving, it means it's in use, it's utilized. It's operational. Look at the examples of the bottom. You have an HVAC unit. If it's, if it's operating, then it will be vibrate. You have a towel dispenser. If you dispense a towel, it will shake. You have a trash can. You operate it, it will vibrate. Another thing that you can uh, use the sensor for is to track things. Are things getting moved? Typical examples, hospitals. Hospitals have a lot of different equipments from push chairs uh, to ventilation units, and they are all somewhere, but often you don't know where exactly. Attaching a vibration sensor to them allows you to directly detect if an item is getting moved from one place to another and use your receiver infrastructure to determine where an item is. Finally, Magnet contacts are typically used uh, to detect if doors or windows are open or closed. This allows you to automatically switch off uh, ventilation or lower the heating when a window is open. Additionally, they can be used to detect position. 
by attaching a small magnet to items that you want to monitor. These can be the rotating wheel in a towel dispenser. This can be uh, the level uh, in a soap dispenser. And based on this, you can report a lot of different information about the status. Now, once you want to report information about the, about the status, at an ocean, we believe in open standards. We created the original an ocean standard a long time ago, but decided to standardize this as an open international standard over 10 years ago. It's now an ISO standard, ISO 14543, fully open to all members uh, to use and to implement and standardize furthermore the application level, what the different information means using the N-Ocean Alliance. An ocean Alliance today has approximately 400 members, which between them have created over 5,000 interoperable products. In addition, an ocean is also active uh, in Zigbee and Bluetooth standardization to support the existing ecosystems there and drive the standardization of energy harvesting forward. In an ocean alliance, we are proud to have a number of uh, key partners spanning the entire uh, value chain from uh, specialized solutions uh, in buildings, such as our, our partners uh, from El Taco, from BSC, uh, company, uh, large international companies like Honeywell, IBM, the cloud uh, and data-driven companies like Microsoft, uh, NT Systems, and service-oriented uh, companies uh, like Engie uh, in France. These members are what really makes our technology so powerful. They enable you to find the right solution from a large number of partners. They build these solutions by integrating technology from us. And specifically for the case of STM 550, we've intentionally chosen the established original PTM module form factor which you can find today in millions of switches as to be the form factor of STM 550 as well. This allows uh, our partners to easily integrate our switch into existing solutions, existing design lines to match the design they already use. On this slide, you can see two examples. On the top, you can see examples from our customer El Taco. On the bottom, you can see examples from our customer TCS. Both of them illustrate very nicely how easy the STM550 multi-sensor can blend uh, into existing switch designs. Finally, if you have a device as powerful as STM550, the configuration of it uh, is a key question. Configuration means time spent at the construction site, time spent in the factory. And this is something that should be as easy and as short as possible. STM550 therefore provides an NFC interface that allows you to easily configure its functionality using a smartphone or a tablet. An Ocean provides a software called an Ocean Tool, which you can find both on the iOS and on the Android App Store to configure the STM550 multi-sensor. So all of this functionality from generating the energy measuring the status, integrating everything into a housing in PTM module form factor to easy configuration via NFC interface is integrated in STM550. Therefore, we call this an Ocean's new Swiss knife. Before we lead to questions and answers, I have another question to you. Which topics would you like to see in future webinars? Would you like to see uh, other product presentations about key new and ocean products like STM550, what we did uh, today, introducing you to the different use cases, uh, key aspects and key functionality of new and ocean products? Or would you like tutorials that take a, a specific function and go into detail how it is working? What are the different wireless protocols? Uh, what do the different bits mean? What are EEP? What are signal telegrams? Uh, how can I build uh, energy harvesting uh, devices uh, myself? Any form of technical information in the form of tutorials. 
or would you be interested to understand how a whole solution from the sensor to the receiver to the gateway to the cloud to the end application does look like these could be presentations done uh, with some of our key partners that highlight you how this uh, technology is used in an actual customer application or would you rather like to see uh, information about industry trends what do we observe what are the latest trends in lighting in modular construction in smarter buildings of in office uh, space monitoring any information about of industry trends could be another topic for a future webinar or finally if you have any other ideas then please use the comment function in the chat to indicate what uh, you would be interested in so again the different options product presentations tutorials solutions uh, that are done uh, together with our partners trends about the industry or other topics that you would like uh, to learn more about please use the selection items uh, and make your choice so that we are able to provide you future webinars uh, that are the most relevant to you so I just received uh, the results you, you can see them uh, on the screen so the, major the majority is actually interested in uh, how would the whole solution look like uh, introducing entire solutions together with our partners we will make a, a note of this uh, and provide additional content about this. I think there are very interesting uh, applications that are built together with our key partners today. With this, I would like to open up for questions uh, and answers. If you want to pose a, a question, please use uh, the question uh, the button with the question mark so that uh, you can pose uh, whatever is most important uh, to you. This uh, I would like to open up uh, for questions. I can see we have already a large number uh, of questions. Uh, so please uh, let, let me check uh, what, what type uh, of questions we see. So here I see a very interesting uh, question. And I am sorry, looking at a sheer number, we will probably not be able to answer all of them. But I would like to uh, ensure you, assure you that we will answer uh, all of them afterwards uh, by email. So the first question is, uh, is there an application for STM 550 in the current Corona situation around social distancing? Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, indeed, uh, we see a lot of interest uh, today in social distancing applications. Social distancing means you need to understand uh, how your office is utilized. So for instance, if you are allowed to place uh, only two persons in a given office space, then you can use, for instance, STM 550 to track uh, which of the office desks are actually in use at the moment. And based on that, determine if you can allow additional uh, workers or not. Then uh, let me check. Uh, we have uh, additional uh, questions. For what is the battery slot uh, in the sensor? That's a very good question. Uh, so obviously I've explained that it is a fully self-powered sensor and then on one of the slides you see a backup slot. So what is this for? Uh, STM550 generates energy from available light. In almost all standard applications uh, in offices, uh, in buildings, you will have sufficient light to power the sensor. Nevertheless, there are use cases where STM550 is installed in locations without light. So this could be, for instance, a basement where you want to detect if a door or window is open or closed. For these cases where we don't have sufficient energy, sufficient light level available, it is possible to fit a backup battery. By default, this backup battery, of course, is not mounted because STM550 is fully operational without light in most standard configuration. So what, uh, what other, uh, let me check. Uh, can uh, all five sensors in STM550 be active at the same time? Uh, that's another very good question. So actually, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, if you buy STM550, the out of the box configuration is that all five sensors will be active at the same time. So the sensor will report temperature, humidity, illumination uh, and light level all at the same time. It is, however, configurable how you want to operate uh, STM uh, 550. So you can operate it also as a 
standard temperature and humidity sensor or only as a light level sensor, this functionality can be selected uh, using the NFC interface. Then another uh, very good question on a technical level, how reliable is the product? Now, obviously, one of the key aspects uh, of energy harvesting technology is uh, the wish to eliminate maintenance. So reliability has always been the paramount concern uh, for an ocean. Because uh, if we build products that eliminate the need to change battery, then they must be rely reliable. So rather than just uh, giving you details uh, about how reliable uh, our product is because of this uh, and because of that, let me tell you, we installed the first building with an ocean technology in 2003. That's the Bosch Siemens headquarter, not very far from uh, our head office uh, in Munich. To this day, the same installation is operational. There have been none of problems. So rather than giving you more examples, I think this is uh, one of the most striking examples of the longevity of this technology. Another way of looking at it would be there are a number of key buildings using our technology. You have seen uh, at the start uh, the Squire uh, in Frankfurt. There are a number of other uh, very prominent buildings uh, ranging uh, from Basel to Madrid uh, to Italy to the Nordics, uh, key buildings uh, in the United States, uh, in Japan, and all of these are operating. All of these are relying on an ocean technology because of the reliability that we have. With this, I, I can see we are at the end of the time. I'm very sorry. I, I can see we have literally 50 more questions here. We will be coming back to you uh, for answering all of your questions. With this, uh, I would like to hand over to my colleague, uh, Markus, to introduce you to our next webinar. Um, many thanks, Matthias. This was a very interesting uh, introduction and overview about our all new STM 550. So we hope, of course, we could uh, uh, inspire you to use our technology in your next project, in next product design or, the, or also in your next integration. Um, here we give already an outlook about the next topic uh, for our webinar series. So we will be talking about the digital solutions for a healthy work environment or general environment. So it's a very, um, um, a very important topic these days. It's scheduled for the 16th of June. And of course, if you have seen, we have also collected your feedback. So we will analyze this and then also, of course, see how we can then satisfy your request with upcoming topics. Um, as mentioned, this is a webinar series which will be proceeding, of course, also for the coming months. So even more important for us to understand uh, your interest and the topics we should be presenting to you. On the last slide, you will again find our contact details. Um, as mentioned by Matthias, we will be coming back on the questions you have raised in today's um, webinar session. But of course, here you find again our contact details. If there's any additional questions you are thinking of after the webinar, so feel free to contact us. Um, with this, I would like to conclude this session. Many thanks for your participation and uh, we will be looking forward to hear you, see you during our next webinar. Thank you and uh, goodbye.